You can use your Revit project model to create an architectural skill model using a 2D process such as laser cutting or water jet cutting or a 3D printing process such as stereolithography. For this tutorial, we'll be looking at using a laser cutting fabrication process. We'll start by adding information to our Revit project model that allows us to control where laser cutting will occur and what type of cutting will occur, cutting through the material or merely scoring the material. Then we'll create a series of 2D views that isolate the different elements that need to be fabricated. Finally, we'll put these isolation views together into a sheet view and virtually print that sheet to a laser cutter. Let's start by creating the line type that we'll use to control the laser cutter operations. Let's switch to the Manage tab where we'll find the line styles under the Additional Settings pull down. Let's open the Line Styles dialog and we'll create a new line style. We'll create one called Laser Cutting. Say OK. For the laser cutter that we'll be using, we'll encode the instruction that the material should be cut through as the thinnest line weight with the color red. So any lines that appear in our 2D views with this line style will be cut by the laser cutting machine. Let's set up another line style. This will be for laser scoring. And this is for lines that should be engraved on the surface of our material but not cut through. We'll say OK. The instruction is again the thinnest line weight but we'll use the color blue. And again, these colors and line weights are determined by the laser cutter's printer driver. Let's say OK to accept those. And we can look at applying those line styles in different 2D views that we'll create to isolate all of the elements that need to be fabricated. Let's start by creating views that will isolate the wall pieces of our architectural model. We can create these views by duplicating and customizing the wall elevations. Let's start with the south elevation. We'll select it and duplicate it. Let's give that a new name. Let's call that the south wall fabrication view. Now there are several things we need to do to this view to isolate the south wall and eliminate any information that won't be needed for fabrication. Let's start by adjusting the crop of this view. We can turn on the cropping and show the cropping. Let me zoom out and bring that in closer to the wall that we're going to be isolating here. Do the same on the other side. Then let's also adjust the far clipping in this view so we're only looking at that front wall face. Let me find a referring view. I'll go to the ground floor plan view. You can see that elevation right there. Let's turn on the far clipping. And then I'll pull that forward so we see just the faces that we want to in the view. Let's return to the fabrication view and zoom in. Now there's still a lot of information that we'd like to remove from this view to isolate only the information that's necessary for fabrication. A good way to get started is to use the visibility graphics overrides to turn off entire classes of information that won't be necessary. For example, we can turn off the level lines that we don't want printed on our model. Let's go to visibility graphics. Go to the annotations and we'll turn off those levels. We should also turn off any model categories that are obscuring our view of the wall. For example, let's turn off that roof and take a look at our model. We're getting closer but there are still a few adjustments that need to be made. For example, we can turn off the color information that we won't be using by changing to a hidden line view. We could also adjust the scale of our architectural model here. The scale at which we're printing this view will also be the scale at which the pieces are fabricated. Let's also adjust a few more pieces. We have the ceiling piece which we won't be needing. We can take out these swings on the doors and any casement windows and we can also take out the floors. So let's do that in the visibility graphics again. Turning off the ceilings. Turning off the floors. 
Let me turn off the topography of the site. And then for those windows, let me expand that category and turn off the elevation swing. Then let's also turn off the elevation swing for the doors. We'll expand into the door category, turn off its elevation swing, and say OK. Our model view is fairly clean now, and we're ready to start adding information to indicate which of the lines will be cut through the material and which will be scored on the surface of the material. Let's zoom on in and take a closer look at this wall view. In our architectural model, we might want to have this wall surface pattern indicating brick and siding, as well as the frames of the doors and windows scored into the surface of the material. We could do that by adjusting one line at a time, but it's actually easier to go back to the visibility graphics and set up some more overrides to change those. For example, for the walls, we can override the color of the surface pattern to use the blue color that will indicate that it should be scored onto the material. We can do a similar thing to the frames of the windows and the doors by choosing the frame element. And then for the lines, again, overriding the color. And also for the doors. Choosing blue as the color to indicate that we want those to be scored. Let's say OK and see how that looks in the model. Let's add a few more scoring lines to highlight the separation between the door panels. To do that, let's switch to the Modify tab and use the Line Work tool. We can choose a line style that we'd like to change the model line to. Let's choose the laser scoring as the type we'd like to change to. And then we can choose these lines separating the door panels to indicate that they should also be scored onto the material. We can use a similar technique to indicate openings that should be cut into the wall surface. We'll use the laser cutting line style instead. Then using the line work tool, choose the edges of the glazed openings to indicate that those surfaces should be cut out of the wall. With the cutting instructions added to the edges of our glazed openings, we're now ready to add lines that will indicate the edges of this wall and separate it from the backing material. We could do that with a line work tool again, but since those edges are made up of lots of small segments, it may be easier to add detail lines with that style. So I'll shift to the Annotate tab, choose the Detail line. We'll choose the laser cutting line style, and then draw lines around the boundary of the wall. You'll probably need to zoom in closely to clean up the edges where a very detailed condition occurs. We'd like to clean up this edge, which separates the two wall surfaces, but also continue up to the corners of the window frame and add lines to make a clean separation between the different surfaces. With the fabrication instructions added to our south elevation, we're now ready to repeat this technique on the other elevations to create the other pieces we'll need for our complete architectural model. To make it easier to reuse the graphic overrides that we've applied in this view and apply them consistently to the other views, let's create a view template. We'll switch to the View tab, say View Templates, then say Create a new template from the view. We'll call that view template Fabrication Walls. Say OK. Confirm that we'd like to reuse the settings that we've applied in this view. And now we're ready to start creating our additional wall views. Let's switch to the east elevation. We can duplicate this view and again rename it, calling it the east wall fabrication. Say OK and start to adjust the appearance of the elements in this view. Before we apply our view template, let's adjust the cropping of this view to make sure we're focusing on the elements that we want to be seeing. So we can pull in the boundaries of the crop. Then I'll find a referring view. Let's go back to that ground floor view where we can take a look at that. Let's turn on the far clip. 
then pull that far clip so we're looking at that wall section. Returning to the east wall fabrication view, we can zoom in and take a closer look at the elements. We have additional information we don't want to see in this view, so let's apply the view template to filter it out. We'll apply a template to the current view, choose the fabrication walls template, say OK, and you'll see that the graphic overrides that were applied in the previous fabrication view have been applied here too. Let's zoom on in and you'll see that there are a few extra elements we just don't want to have appear in this view. These are actually the ends of the interior walls and if we would just like to eliminate them from this view we can select them by control clicking on them then right click to say let's hide these elements in the view just to remove them so they're not cluttering up our fabrication instructions. Next we'll apply the line work tool to indicate that we want to cut out those glazed openings switching to the modify tab, line work making sure that laser cutting is selected, then choosing the edges of the glazed openings. And then, after adding the cutting instructions to the edges of the glazed openings, to return to the Annotate tab and use Detail Lines with a laser cutting style, to indicate the boundaries of the wall itself. Next we'll create views that will help us fabricate the sloping roof surfaces. This can be especially tricky because our typical 2D views are oblique to the sloping surface. The key to fabricating these pieces successfully is to create new views which are perfectly perpendicular to the sloping surface so that we can trace the edges of the roof elements in our project model. Let's switch back to the south elevation view and see how that's done. Switching to the south elevation, we'll create a new section view that will rotate to match the slope of the roof. We'll start by adding a new reference plane directly to the surface of the sloping roof, using the Pick tool and then choosing the roof surface. This reference plane will help us rotate the section cut to make sure the section view is perfectly perpendicular to the roof plane. We'll switch to the View tab, choose the Section tool, then cut a typical vertical section, then choose the Rotate tool and rotate by sweeping when you get to the precise angle of the sloping roof plane, Revit will lock in and indicate that the section cut is now parallel to that reference plane. We'll click to place it there. Now that it's parallel, let's move it above and I'll flip the direction. Let's also pull that down so the extents will cover the entire roof surface. And now when we open that section view, You'll see that the roof plane is available for us to trace its edges. Let's rename that. Let's rename that to be the Roof East Fabrication View. And then we could add detail lines by picking and tracing the edges. We'll switch to the Annotate tab, choose Detail Lines, then making sure that the laser cutting line style is selected, we'll use the Pick tool and select those edges. With those detail lines added to the edges, we can now use the visibility graphics for the view to turn off most of the model elements, but leave the detailed lines turned on. Finally, to clean up these edges, we can select a line. We can use the trim tool to clean up those edges and form a continuous boundary around the edge of the roof plane. With our 2D fabrication views created, we're now ready to place the views on a sheet and send that sheet to a virtual printer to start the fabrication process. Let's start by creating a new sheet. We'll switch to the View tab. 
choose New Sheet, then choose a title block. In this case, we'll choose one that's been set up to match the boundaries of the largest material that the laser cutter can process, 18 by 24. Let's say OK to create the sheet. And we're now ready to start dragging views onto the sheet. Before we do that, let's return to the views and make any final cleanups and adjustments. For example, we'll use the visibility graphics overrides to turn off that section cut, as well as the reference planes, because we don't want those to print in the final model. We'll turn off the sections, as well as the reference planes to hide those. Next, we'll adjust the cropping of this view, bringing in the boundaries very close to the edges of the part so that we can use our material efficiently and lay out the various parts very close together on the sheet. Let's return to that new sheet view, open it, and we can drag in the 2D fabrication views, starting with the south wall, followed by the east wall, We'll align that right next to it, and then also the roof. Now for our fabrication purposes, we won't need the view title displayed with each of the different views, so let's edit the viewport, and we'll turn off the title, saying no title to be shown. Okay, that'll remove it from all the different views, and that'll let us push that view even closer so we can use the material even more efficiently. We're now ready to send this sheet full of the fabrication views to the laser cutter using its virtual printer driver. To do that, we'll go to the Revit menu and choose Print. And then we'll adjust the print settings as needed to fabricate these parts accurately. Let's go to the Print Setup dialog. We'll print this in a landscape mode, adjust the placement on the sheet on the laser cutter's bed, for our laser cutter, we need to shift the sheet 6 inches higher in the Y direction. Then check to make sure that the zoom is set to 100%. We don't want to rescale the images to fit the page. We want to create an accurate scale model, so it's important that that's set to 100% to get the true size. When we're done adjusting these settings, click OK. You can choose to save these settings for a future session, which is probably a good idea. I'll call this Laser Fabrication. Say OK. And now we're ready to print. It's always a good idea to preview your work to verify that things look OK before sending it to the laser cutter and that you don't waste any material. If that looks good, click Print. And we'll click OK to actually send it to the laser cutter. The next steps will vary a bit depending upon the specifics of your fabrication machine. For my laser cutter, we can open a control panel to see the jobs that are waiting in the laser cutting queue. In this control panel view, we can see how our cutting instructions are laying out on the laser cutting bed, the red lines again indicating things that will be cut, and the blue lines indicating lines that will be scored. We can also enter settings to indicate the properties of the materials that will be used for this job. For example, we can choose mat board and enter a thickness of the material. 0.08 inches, for example. Say OK. And when we're done, we can click the Play button to start the job and begin the actual production process.